Okay, I want to introduce my, my dear friend, Daniel Scarpafitius, that it's, uh, it's a great friend, it's a, a very, very nice person that I have the pleasure to meet you in Ukraine two years ago. Uh, we had a great time there. We make a, we make a very nice lecture in some some of the of the events that they create in in Ukraine. And uh, I'm going to introduce you. You are you are uh, you are, you 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 make your graduation in Kolnes Medicine University in the Department of Implantology in Lithuania. You are part of the scientific member of the trade company, and you are KOL of this company too. And uh, you are international speaker. I see you uh, making some uh, wonderful lectures in, uh, in, in several countries. So we are going to, to talk today about uh, something very, very important, that it's the multi-unit fi fixa fixation in implantology. And um, I think you are going to, to show us uh, very, very nice uh, cases and, uh, and not only cases, but the, what is behind this uh, kind of, uh, uh, of technology. So, Daniels, for, if, you, if you want to, to, to introduce something, to, to say something before you, you go to, to your uh, presentation, Please, the stage is completely yours. I, I want to say one one thing. I want to 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 say to the people that invite me for this meeting, to moderate this meeting. That uh, I'm very glad to be here, uh, not because uh, not because it I was invited to moderate this, but especially because I'm going to moderate something with a very very good friend. So I want to. To, to say to the people from uh, Root, Trade Root, and uh, the people from Open Dental Community, I want to, to say thank you for this uh, kind of opportunity. Daniels, the, the, the stage is yours. Thank you, dear Darcio, my friend. Uh, good evening, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, nice to meet you. Unfortunately, uh, meanwhile, virtually. But anyway, we're connecting, connecting time by time, sharing our knowledges. And uh, today, uh, thanks for dear Dr. Darcio Fonseca, which, who is uh, a moderator of our uh, lect lecturing, lecturing. And our thematic will be about multi-unit fixation in implantology. I will try to share with you some technical features to understand the differences, why it is necessary to use this type of fixation in implantology. And of course, I will uh, continue, I will fin and will finish with uh, clinical situations, which are more important. And uh, I, I suppose that you will find something for you and uh, will leave some uh, knowledges uh, in your minds and you will uh, use this in your daily practice what i would like to wish you for the future so again One thing that you. i want to, to tell to the audience is that um, you can make some uh, some if any anybody wants to make a, a comment or anybody wants to to make a, a, a ask something they can write and i try to 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 read and and make the 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 question to Dr. Dario Danius, and uh, we want to do this very interactive. So it's nice if the people have any doubt to make the make any question in the right time because I think it's more it's more nice for everybody. Okay. Yes, it will be more really more attractive uh, lecture. That's for, it. With, with, with uh, some questions and, and discussions. Okay. So now I'm, now I'm connecting to my lecture. So 
as I you can, you can put it a, a little bigger. Oh no 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 no! It's me. I think uh, it will be more better to see us alive for uh, for our okay, colleagues. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, okay. It's nice. My screen is maximum, and I yeah. can do maximum on your screen, but we will will disappear. And sometimes, to to communication of the lectures is, is more attractive for for visitors. So we leave. Okay, us okay. On, let's on do it. Screen. Let's do it. Okay, okay. Let's start. So today our topic is the features of multi-unit fixation in implantology and analyzing of some clinical cases. First of all, I would like to introduce our uh, community, of our open dental community that involves and have uh, inside of this organization a lot of experienced uh, doctors having 10, 20, 30, 40 years of experience in implantology. And the main goal of ours and our motto is to reduce volume of surgery and reduce amount of surgery. That what we are uh, streaming to and what is uh, our um, uh, solutions in, in our daily practice. And if we can avoid the difficult surgeries, we are trying to do this. But of course, to get this possibility we have also to have some instruments for this so of course i will touch this question today also what is necessary and very important for this uh, our our solutions first of all good primary and stability of the implant between more or less 30 60 newton centimeters of course it is very very important the shape the geometry of the implant so why we created all our implants with active geometry? Because this geometry will allow you to have quite often a good primer stability, no matter if it is a dense bone or sometimes also we have a, a spongious bone as well. Of course, drilling protocol is very, very important in this case and uh, i think uh, might be a couple words i can stop here because if we have uh, here a lot of our users for them to understand the protocol of our drilling i will a little bit open widely this this screen and explain a bit more to understand what do we mean. In this drilling protocol, we put all implants of our system. That means all monoblocks, classical implants, and new one shape compressive K implant as well. And now when the doctor starts working in different type of bones, we have dense bone and more soft bone like type D1, D2 and type D2, D4. And for example, if we are going to put a monoblock in dense bone, 3.5 millimeter of diameter, let me say, and we find the first drill DB2020. So we drill the depth of this implant for DB2020. After it, we will see 2.0, we will use this drill. And after this drill, we find the information if it is necessary. So that means that after the drill 2.0, we can try to put our implant. If the implant goes too hard, we take it out. And then when we drill uh, half of the depth of the alveola with the drill 2.5, and then again, we go with the, with the implant. So by this preparing of the uh, alveola of the bed for the implant, we will get as maximum possibilities to achieve good primer stability as we can. Because this is a very important for us not to hide the implant under the gums. And especially if we are using and working with monoblocks with one piece implants, it is impossible to hide them 
And so primer stability is uh, very, very important for these reasons. So not only primer stability is important for uh, minimalizing of uh, surgery. The amount, the volume of the bone is also important. And we know that uh, we have to have at least one millimeter of the bone around the implant. So uh, when we have thin ridges that have horizontally width of the bone less than more or less five millimeters, then we have a problem. We have to do some augmentations if we use classical implants. Yeah. But if we will add monoblocks, this is a, another kind of implants. This is also screw type of implants, but they have another design, another geometry. And this type of implants allows us to manage with a narrow bone, easier, not doing augmentation. So we can add this type of implant to our classical implant solutions and combining between them. So for us, it was very important to give real life and real possibilities for monoblocks as well as for classical implants. So why you see different kinds of monoblocks, some of them are with multi-unit abutments that we will discuss about today. And of course, with another type of abutments that is also very important and necessary for another solutions. Daniel, so I have I, a question. I have a question. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I have, uh, you never, for your example, that uh, you are using, and, and it's very interesting, you have another options in a, in a very narrow reach, but um, you even in reaches very, very, very thin, you never use osteodensification uh, burrs. You use only the burrs of the kit. You never do any osteodensification burrs in the in even in a thin ridge. Uh, when the th you know it, uh, we should uh, also discuss what does it mean thin. For me, it might be thin two millimeters or three point five or four millimeters. Also, is quite thin. So, yeah. uh, if we have very thin ridge, then of course even monoblocks cannot help you. Yeah, yeah. But we found uh, about uh, 30 percentage of our our uh, observation in our clinic that about 30 percentage of uh, sites has the volume of the bone between 3.5, 5.5 millimeters. Yeah. So for this amount, horizontal width of the bone, is necessary to do augmentation if we use classical implants. And yeah. monoblocks having another geometry have possibility to avoid this. This augmentation. Because, okay, thank you, thank you. And, and now if this is a picture showing this difference between geometry because classical implants have this place where we have the connection with the abutment. And yeah. of course, we have to have a gap for abutment and the metal walls of the implant to be surrounded this abutment and not to deformate or to fracture in time of using wearing the implant. Meanwhile, monoblock doesn't have detail in detail. It is one body implant. So why it is slimmer and here we have a core of the implant, which is uh, uh, slimmer comparing to, to classical implant, more or less about uh, 1.5 uh, millimeter. So here we can uh, help us to cover the amount of the bones as I told previously, between sorry, between between uh, 3.5, 5.5 uh, millimeter of the bone, and while using uh, monoblocks, 
because uh, this part uh, of the classical implants, when it goes into narrow bone, it either breaks the walls of the bone or fracture it. So here, here, uh, combining mono, monoblocks uh, helps us to avoid this. Another thing that I think it's important for the audience, it's, uh, and it's something, it's a concern with the, the monoblocks uh, implants is, uh, you put the implants and, um, but you have a torque, a maximum torque to put the implant because you can, you can make some angulations of the, of the abutment part to put in the better position for the, the, the prosthetic part. But you know that in the old monoblocks, in the old one piece implants, when you make so many strength, this is going to, to break. Mm -hmm. These implants can, uh, what are the maximum uh, torque or um, strength you, you, they, they can handle? Uh, it depends every time on the clinical situation because when you have more dense bone and better uh, primer stability, then it is a possibility to bend the implants. And uh, if you have softer bone or more angulation, then it's uh, more clever to use uh, monoblocks with multi-unit abutments. Okay, but, okay, uh, okay, okay. Important, important. Very nice, I, very nice answer. Thank you. Yes, yes. And as you see in the corner, uh, this is the new shape of our new uh, design of monoblock. And this uh, ellipse form of the implant is with another philosophy because here in this uh, region when, where we have often a, a, a resorption of the bone, we left the as minimum of the metal as it is possible. And okay. we then started to grow the metal, to expand the amount of the metal deeper well, where the bone is also expanding. So this kind and this shape of the implant uh, was uh, developed concerning to the shape of the, of the um, bone of the alveolar where we observe the uh, atrophic uh, bone. Okay. So if we will look a bit uh, to these differences, look monoblock and between the uh, between the topics of the windings, we had a gap. And this gap sometimes gives us a life, gives a possibility to leave the bone here. Despite that our windings here perforated the bone, but the gap solved to leave the bone here. Meanwhile, when we the mon, when the classical implant, we have the wall. We don't have possibility here to, to make gaps and bindings. Just deeper here, we have possibility to do something like here in monoblock. So if we have here a small amount of the bone, we know that it will resorb. So this is also very important, understanding the differences of geometry between monoblocks and classical implants. I started a bit to tell you about these differences because to understand why we also created monoblocks and gave for monoblocks a life and possibilities to involve them in our solutions, in our clinical uh, using usage so here is also a tablet uh, where we sh we wanted to show you that uh, for example if we will take mm, let me say monoblock 3.5 millimeter it will be equal comparing to classical implant more or less 2.1 2.8 millimeter of diameter that means if we will have classical implant 2.1, 2.8, more or less, it will be like monoblock 3.5. Okay. This is because the core of monoblock, the windings and the gaps between windings. And so, as you see, monoblocks starting from three millimeters to 5.5 can easily be used in the 
the uh, in the uh, thickness of the bone from four millimeters to six millimeters, even from 3.5 to six millimeters, because bone, it has plasticity. And when we put in the thin bone, it little bit can expand. Later on, it erupts or fractures, but a bit it can expand. So sometimes if the bone is uh, more or less uh, not very hard, we can have also this phenomenon and uh, put for example, 3.0 or even 3.5 millimeter monoblock in the bone, which with is 3.5 or 4.0 millimeters. So we can cover this thickness of the bone with such uh, solutions and with this type of, of implants and uh, avoiding this additional uh, bone augmentation. So also we have an advantages using this because we have less invasive surgery we have no necessity to make buccal or lateral augmentation. So we wouldn't have necessity to go uh, deep in the soft tissues. And when we are not able, and we, it is not necessary for us to go more deep in the soft tissues, we less influence of muscles that are touched to periosteum. So the healing is more uh, uh, more uh, predictable and uh, it's less traumatic and uh, this uh, soft tissues are not influenced in muscles and we usually quite often observe good and connected uh, soft tissues around, uh, around these types of implants uh, not doing additional soft tissues augmentation. So here is also a big advantage because soft tissue augmentation is also not very um, comfort for our patients. Of course, less pain, not uh, no, that's, speaking that's, about it. And that, that's not the only reason because some uh, of the tissue augmentation fails. Even, even everything it's okay, you do the surgery for the soft tissue and it fails. So it's like you it's like you 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 do you do three or four step back in your surgery. So if you can avoid it, I think it's a better a better way. I can say our uh, our clinic uh, we do I think more than 99 percent 99 percentage of our implantology leaving all the implants opening. But we are combining classical implants and monoblocks and solving these uh, situations in combinations and uh, avoiding this necessity of uh, bone augmentation. So it helps for us to reduce amount of surgeries and it helps for us. And of course, it it's a very, very comfort for our patients because nobody likes amount of surgeries and of course, number of surgeries what is necessary when we have atrophic uh, atrophic sites or for implants. So it was a, a small inter introducing <clears throat> the differences between monoblocks and classical implants because now we will uh, continue uh, our uh, topic about multi-units, but uh, why we do multi-units on monoblocks, we wanted a little bit to introduce you why we uh, also use this type of uh, implants. So our main topic is multi-unit. And uh, as, I, as we discussed, uh, we have uh, classical implants and multi-units. For classical implants, two sizes, uh, uh, regular size and uh, big size, and monoblocks as well. We have uh, big sizes, for monoblocks, uh, compressive type, pterygoid type, it's a very, very special our product. And of course, uh, compressive type with regular or small multi-unit abutment. These abutments are the same, comparing like uh, for classical implants, the same regular abutment, like on monoblock and on classical implant, and the same uh, big abutment for classical implants and uh, monoblocks as well. So looking at the multi-unit, 
we uh, now will a little bit uh, take concentration on straight multi-units because as you find here and here, we see that monoblocks has multi-unit multi-unit abutments in one axis with the implant. So classical implants for with straight multi-units will be the same like monoblock with straight multi-units on, on, on the top of the implant. What gives poss what possibilities give us uh, multi-units? The slope of this abutment has in our system 30 degrees. So if we have two multi-units, we have 30 degrees of one slope and 30 degrees of another slope. So we can connect these implants with one bridge having between implants until 16 degrees of divergation or converg convergation between the structures, between the implants. This slope helps us in uh, monoblocks and in classical implants when we have straight multi-units until 60 degrees. That's how does it look schematically. For example, we have straight multi-unit for classical implant and uh, it connects to the implant with a regular screw. And then one, we have multi-unit abutment, which is used for screwing the superstructure. That means the bridge uh, of our, our construction. To understand this angulation, we created uh, the angle meter or DIR. This is an uh, equipment uh, which is in our uh, drill set. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, just a second, just a second. If any, anyone want to uh, make some question, can write in the comments, okay? I, uh, Daniel, sorry, yes. before we, we go, we have here one, one question for P, Piotr Kruki about if these multi-units from root are compatible with iMetric. I don't with know what. what? Sorry, can you... Uh, can are you... the multi-unit abutment from root company compatible with iMetric? What does it mean, iMetric? I don't know what is iMetric. I don't know if it's a brand or I... I... Maybe he, he can he can, he can might uh, be might be the our colleague asks uh, is it possible to use them uh, playing with chronometrics? I might don't know. Be. I didn't understand. It's i metric. You say i, I metric, but maybe he is uh, hearing us, and we can he can he can write uh, he can put the the question again. Okay, it might be. Might be okay. because I can understand this iMetric. Okay. So, dear Darcy and colleagues, uh, we stopped on this angle matter. And angle matter is done uh, to put it on all the implants, what we have, monoblocks, classical implants, multi-units. And here we have uh, uh, holes which are for putting it, sorry, on monoblocks or on the abutments of classical implants that are in the boxes uh, will, comes with the implants and this two legs are going in the uh, hand in the uh, uh, connector of multi-unit abutment which is uh, which comes with the implant uh, in the box and when we want to understand in what angulations we put our implants we put on one of the implant this angle matter and here we see we see the laser marked lines and we found one of the line 60. this means that this is 60 degrees and uh, 
we have these lines couple positions because anywhere you will put this angle meter every time you can find that to to measure with this uh, with this uh, laser market just a second i will now put another picture and i will explain more practically to understand this angle meter here you see a, a prototype because first of all a uh, company made this for me to understand is it uh, useful in practice and now <clears throat> i put the implant and wanted to understand for me when i created the hole for the implant for the second implant i wanted to understand what angulation is between the implant if just looking by eye at this at these positions i can't understand what is the angulation now i put the probe parallel to the 60 degrees line laser market and i am, i see that my probe is more angulated comparing to this hull which is prepared for the implant so i understand that, I, that my next implant will stand less than 60 degrees uh, with a with a front standing implant and i am sure that in this case I can use these implants for uh, for uh, one bridge solutions, and the technician will do it easily. The one uh, bridge uh, which can go on top of the of the multi-unit abutments. If the uh, position of this distal implants will be more than my probe, that means I can be more than 60 degrees with the implant then i cannot use straight multi-units and then i have to solve this either the position of the implant or i should use the uh, another kind of uh, multi-unit uh, uh, abutment that i will tell a little bit later about this so again how does it look if we will have here multi-unit and here also multi-unit between these two types of abutments we have possibility to have until 60 degrees of angulation so here is the line that is parallel to the 60 degrees laser marking and we see that our implant is less than this markering so we are sure that now we can put in this position our implant and we will we are sure about this that we can solve the uh, prosthetic treatment using straight abutments because if you are using monoblocks you cannot change the multi-unit with the monoblocks you will receive just only straight multi-units so here you should be sure that your implants will be positioned in until the right position. 60 degrees very good very nice tool and this is that i wanted to tell you that uh, here is the fixation for the this is the carrier of the implant uh, multi-unit implant in the box and how does it uh, fixate this uh, angle meter in the uh, carrier of uh, monoblocks with multi-unit abutments of course there will be some situation when we will put implants more angulated than 60 degrees then we should use just classical implants or combining monoblocks with classical implants because classical implants has possibility to have additional angulated multi-units that means not only straight multi-units but also angulated and we have three different angulations 15 30 and even 45 degrees of angulation multi-unit this is 15 degrees this is additionally 30 degrees and 45 degrees angulation of the multi-unit abutment so what then we have comparing to straight multi-unit using 
classical implant and angulated multi-unit, we can add 15, 30, or even 45 degrees. So now we have more wide possibilities. So again, if you are using just only monoblocks, when you have thin bones and don't want to do augmentation and you are using monoblocks with multi-units, you cannot overcome 60 degrees. But if you have somewhere thin bone and somewhere thicker bone, and you have a big angulation between these implants, then in this size where you have thicker bone, you can use classical implants and add angulated multi-units, which give you additionally 15, 30, or 45 degrees. That means then one between two multi-units, you will have not 60, but 75 degrees, not 60, but 90 degrees, or even 105 degrees. These angulated multi-units additionally gives you uh, 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 addition, additional uh, angulation. When the insertion of the angulated multi-units is going to be used in the classical abutments, especially in uh, time of surgery, uh, it's useful to use the pin of the transfer because the pin of the transfer will be for you like, as a guide. When you have a long neck multi-unit, you can leave the screw inside the multi-unit. You can screw the pin until it connects firmly, put your angulated multi-unit into the classical implants, implant and then you will see the position of the transfer this position will be as a flag as an indicator where your occlusal screw will be in what kind of position if this position is not comfort for you you can take out the abutment change the position and put it again into the implant if it's okay then pressing the multi-unit abutment into the implant Screw out this transfer and then uh, screw, 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 with the, with the screw the uh, abutment in his final position. This transfer pin will be for you as a flag, as an indicator. If you have a short multi-unit abutment, then take out this inside screw because when you put the transfer, it will connect with the head of the uh, screw and uh, the bindings will protect to put into the final position your abutment. So take out the, this green screw, screw the transfer, put your abutment, you will find your desired position of the abutment, pressing the uh, multi-unit into the implant, take out the transfer and then uh, abutment will fix because it is conus fixation conical fixation, and then you can easily screw the green screw in his final position, touching and, and keeping the multi-unit in his final final uh, position. So this transfer pin for you will be as a guide. Of course, all the necessary uh, accessories, what is, uh, what is necessary for performing your uh, prosthetic uh, is... Uh, yeah, and for big and for small multi-unit as well. Here we have gingiva formers, the abutments, mono analogs, and uh, uh, analogical transfers. You have analogical transfers only and, uh, not no. open tray, or you have uh, closed tray too. Yes, uh, closed tray uh, transfers are possible as well. They are in, 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 in the system. And of course, uh, digital uh, transfers also are okay. available for, for this kind of, uh, of for this type of, of, of abutments. Okay. And of course, there are uh, plastic type 
because uh, some uh, uh, some doctors wants to cast the yeah. the secondary abutment for me for me usually mostly i use factory made titanium abutment and i glue the bridge to the titanium abutment uh, because the, this abutment is the most precise it's factory done and it will sit on the abutment maximum precise and my screw will go inside maximum precise because it is machine done abutment if you will use plastic and you will cast it of course it depends on the technician and on the, of the quality of the casting but uh, you will never reach the maximum uh, uh, precise as machine done but of course if you have a low occlusion uh, heat if you want to start with metal ceramic straight from the from the beginning of the multi unit then sometimes casting is is uh, uh, like a solution is might be done and might be used uh, as well as as uh, comparing to this uh, regular um, abutments of course the same is uh, for uh, small multi units uh, uh, as well and there is also castable angulated multi unit if sometimes the position is easier to little bit to move to some lingual or 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 palatal side from buccal or in another direction then sometimes uh, for technician is uh, necessary and more useful this angulated angulated abutments as i know now company is going to do also titanium angulated multi units and uh, and uh, then we will have an option uh, not castable but also titanium angulated uh, secondary parts for of multi units and this is uh, yeah dr darcio what you asked about this is uh, for closed tray technique closed tray yes and this is for uh, digital for scanning uh, in the lab or scanning in the mouth okay the differences between regular and big multi units is uh, is uh, the diameter of the screw regular is like a lot of companies doing it's 1.8 mm diameter of the screw but the big one is about 2.5 mm and this screw is quite big and quite strong and as we know that we use multi unit solutions not only in total uh total bridges total uh, solutions uh, quite often we use in one line prosthetic treatment so here the resistance of the forces is is uh, more important so we suggest uh, to use bigger screw to overstand this uh, chewing and biting forces small multi units on mono blocks have two lines 3.0 and 3.5 mono blocks they comes in the blister with a green handle and with a titanium cap on top of it which can be manipulated with the external case with a code it it here but for more uh, possibilities you can also have the key etms that can be connected straight to the multi unit included including the small multi units for classical implants so you have two possibilities either to manipulate with this cap titanium and this case or also additionally use this uh, uh, insertion insertion tool for inserting uh, implants and uh, and multi units this is a drawing of uh, classical 
multi-unit, and this how does it look in the classical implants. So, uh, as you see, this type of multi-unit, small multi-unit, is inserting, it's, it's screwing into the implant, not putting in the implant and screwing with a screw, but screwing into the implant, because there is no place for to put screw here inside, because of the dimension of this type of the multi-unit. And the connection and insertion torque should be about 20, 25 Newton centimeters. The big multi-units for monoblocks has more, uh, more uh, uh, line, a uh, couple, uh, couple lines more uh, comparing to small. It is 3.0, 3.5, 4, and 5.0. Uh, 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 diameter of the implant. And this type of implants comes with shape of like this holder. And this holder is providing with these insertion tools, Syria ETHE or ETML. ETHE comes into the pink holder and ETM kind of insertion tools comes on to abutment of a uh, multi-unit head. Just only for pterygoids, the most useful for pterygoid implants that also has big multi-unit type of abutment, the most useful is the handle, which has to have an additional uh, uh, handle which i will show when i will touch uh, pterygoids this is this long detail with which it uh, is uh, uh, is done to manage with uh, <clears throat> big multi units a very very important uh, thing when doctors are putting this type of implants never ever do this through the soft tissues because if you will go flapless you will press with the abutment of the multi-unit the soft tissues and then you will have an ischemia of soft tissues the ischemia of the bone your bone will resorb and will go down every time you should make a cut a small cut if you have a lot of soft tissues then you can punch them and take it out, but you should open the side of the bone. If you are doing an incision, you go with the flap for the flap, very small amount to the buccal, one, two, maximum three millimeters, not deep, not deep, because then you, as I told, involve a periostum, a periostum and, and, and muscles in the uh, deep soft tissues. Just open the side of the bone and then prepare the bed for the implant and finally prepare the bed for the multi-unit abutment. As you see in this schematic drawing, finally take the drill D step one, D step two, sorry, or D55.0 and prepare this bed of the bone then you will have like a, some cube. And this cube is for inserting this part of multi-unit a bit into the bone. Then after the surgery, after a couple months, if the bone will resorb, it will resorb small under the multi-unit, not going deep. Because if you just put you will prepare you will prepare just only for the implant and finally not preparing the bed for the multi-unit abutment then your bo bone will go down will resorb a bit and then your abutment might be going up over the soft tissues and it will be not very comfort for you so my suggestion suggestion especially in hard bone prepare finally the bed for the multi-unit and multi-unit abutment should be inserted more or less until the line where the connection becomes with the 
external accessories. So uh, this will help you to have everything in the soft tissues and uh, to have more nice and more uh, comfort prosthetic treatment. In the upper, you see the preparation of for conometric. Also, when we have this type of abutment, we have the trepan, and after insertion the implant into the bone, we go around releasing a bit the bone, and then we have a small space, space sorry, small space for uh, conometric cap. So this is very very important to understand because. Sometimes, as I see, guys uh, are involved in quick surgery, especially flapless surgery, where they lose their soft tissues uh, and, and, and pressing them and, and not preparing good surrounding of soft tissues around the uh, implants. It's, uh, it's a, a, a big mistake because soft tissues, as we know, are very, very important for all type of the implants. I think I am right, dear Darcio. What do you say? Hey, I'm going to ask you two questions about your one colleague. One colleague, uh, Dr. Orsechowski, make two questions that I think you can you you are able to to answer. Yes, great. It's about the surgical guide drill kit for root implants. You have any um, uh, drill kit for guide surgery in, in root company or it's uh, in the bake? It's in the bake or it's already outside? Uh, unfortunately, the real guiding set, uh, trade company doesn't have yet okay but it is possible to use uh the universal guiding sets but i can the, the two-piece implants yes 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 for two-piece implants but i can say from my practice i'm using uh, guiding uh, quite a lot when i'm doing uh, total surgeries yeah especially toothless especially yeah and uh, what is necessary for me from the guide is a hole of two millimeters for the uh, pilot drill yeah you and use the guide only for the pilot drill you don't use the full guided that's yes it. and that's it because here again remembering the beginning of the lecture i said we should manage the bone and if we will go for full guided we should drill 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 and then go with the implant sometimes you will have good primer stability sometimes you wouldn't have good primer stability the guide wouldn't help you with this so when you will do the pilot drilling and then you will finish with the our drilling protocol, feeling the bone, inserting implant, and if it goes hard, then go out, put to the uh, to the implant uh, to the side, go again with the drill, again take the implant, and this going with the implant helps you very very often to achieve good primer stability. Okay. So here is very important. And again, again, don't think that the guided surgery will do the surgery instead of you. You should very, very control this, especially when the ridges are narrow. Yeah. You that's... can think that you created everything very nicely on computer, but in the mouth, if your guide will move a small, small angulation or small position somewhere a, a bit, you will put your implants in, 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 in not proper positions. So yes. believe, you should control guides. For me, yes. I put the guide, I touch it with the fingers, not putting with a screw, I touch them with the fingers, going with the uh, drills, then one, take it out the guide, 
making a small cuts opening and then finding where my drills are where my beds are for for my implants and then preparing the bed uh, for the for the, the desired implant so so yeah. what is this and there are a lot of companies which have our products in uh, in guiding preparation when you want to do this digi digital digitally there is a lot of also exocat reshape uh, blue sky bio it will come soon uh, uh, about 10 companies has our our products in in their list okay very nice another question from the same um, um, in the same from the same doctor and uh, he said that um, he's deeply interested in, with guide surgery the problem of primate stability we can solve easily of course using guides we should control it always tell during my lectures well but the same doctor uh, have another question is about the drilling protocol for root implants where he can find it where it's where it's available to the drill protocols for root implants it's easy to find uh, uh i think he should ask a dealer because mm -hmm. dealer uh have these protocols and if in case uh, somehow the dealer doesn't have, he asks us and we send all the protocols. Personally, uh, personally uh, uh, informing how it to use, because now in, in this, our presentation, I don't want to stop so deeply in to understand this, because of course, in couple words, it's, it's not, uh, it's not uh, sometimes so quickly, for everybody understanding how to use it yeah. but uh, uh, I'm a creator of this protocol and I work with this protocol and I can say because I'm also a, a, a clinician with a lot of doing practice and I can say that this helps a lot this helps a lot we as I told we more than 99 percentage of our surgeries are open healing okay Another question from one, one doctor, a friend of mine from Portugal, Dr. Alexandre Ruvisco, ask you, when you're using the D-step drill, you don't change the, profound, the, 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 the deep of the preparation for multi-unit depending on the thickness of the soft tissue? I like to put the abutment, sorry, I like to put my abutments until the level of the bone. Okay. I'm leaving the uh, neighboring standing bone on the this level what it, it, it is. But the multi-unit or conometric goes until the level. And then I leave for the nature to go deeply as it is necessary for it. As thicker soft tissues we will have, as less it will go down. So yes, 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 it yes, doesn't yes. influence on me. It will influence on nature. So more, more up because you have enough soft tissue until the the line of the of the abutment. That's it. We, of course, if you have thick soft tissues, if you have a uh, 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 not high uh, level of the bone, then of course, then one, it's better not to go very deep. Might be a, a bit or to stop straight on the platform of the bone. For example, on Monday and on, on Tuesday, I had uh, two operations totally mandible. And uh, I, we had a very soft bone in the posterior area and uh, we put the uh, uh, monoblocks with multi-unit abutments perforating cortical bones the occlusal cortical bone and lingual cortical bone to have good primer stability anyway the implant going just only in the soft bone will will have very bad very small primer stability so I had about eight millimeters or 10 millimeters the length of the implant. Of course, I left it. I, I didn't go deeply. Yeah. Because this is a smaller area. 
this is not uh, the important for me. And the most important for me was to give as maximum contact implant with the bone. Okay, another another question. Very, very, very fast, Danny. Sorry, but the people are yeah, yeah. asking, and I, I think it's an opportunity to don't uh, don't go uh, don't lose this this uh, these questions. questions. Uh, yeah. We have another another colleague, uh, Doctor Sanduyak, that ask us ask you if the treffing you use for monoblock before chronometric fix. It's something special, or is from roots, or is a normal uh, trefine? Uh, it's a, a normal trefine, or is something? Uh, no, it's normal trefine. If, okay. if you use if if you use uh, old-fashioned uh, abutments, that means compressive C implants, the the uh, Thickness of the of the abutment in the in the bottom is 3.4 millimeters. So trepine 3.5, uh, okay. 4.5, inner 3.5, outside uh, damage 4.5. Or the trepine 4.0, 5.0 is useful. So you every time you you will manage bone around the around the bed of the around the uh, abutment of the implant. Another another question, quick question. This is a tricky question for you because mm -hmm. I know that you are the expert in pterygoid implants. Mm -hmm. Dr. Koshna is asking if it's any possibility to use compressive or basal implant instead of pterygoid implant at posterior maxilla. I think that uh, there the best the best is. Uh, Compressive 4.0, 4.5, 5, 5.5. This not 3.0, 3.5. And basal, I'm not experienced in basal implants, but uh, I think the basal will be 4.0, 4.5, but not thicker. Okay, okay. I, I thank you. You can go mm. on, go forward. So uh, we stopped here at this unique product. This is a pterygoid implant, uh, very lovely implant, very interesting region with a, a very good and 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 uh, let me say unexpected possibilities. We have a lot of different. Uh, uh, solutions and and a lot of uh, jobs uh, using this pterygoid area and gathering a lot of information and thanks for our uh, president of open dental community dear dr henry diderich uh, he even made a magazine a journal uh, considering this uh, pterygoid implants and we are going might be to to make a book even uh, for this implants because this is interesting area and it's helpful. Not always, not always. It's necessary to understand this area. It's necessary to understand what you are expecting and what you are going to achieve. But this is but this is very very interesting uh, additional solution in implantology. So these are pterygoids and we have two lines of pterygoids, 3.5 and 4.5 diameter. And uh, as you see, the length starts from 16 until 26 millimeters. My mostly desired and mostly useful is 4.5. But also sometimes if the tuber is, is uh, uh, has less amount of the bone, 3.5 also I, I use as well. So these implants also has, have a big multi-unit implant uh, abutments and uh, and uh, just only one tool which is necessary for bed preparation for these implants this is drill db 2020 and green handle 80 each with this tool you will prepare the bed for monoblock pterygoid implant and this is another tool that previously I said that I will speak about. 
This is the Gandal ETH-OH, which is connected, which can be connected to this implant carrier, which has a connection with, a, with a, another carrier, which is in the box with the implant. So these two handles, this and this, are very important when you are using uh, pterygoid implants. And one suggestion for our colleagues, when you have this equipment, this handle, make a small cut, minus cut with a disc, like I try to show you here with a disc. Because in time of insertion of the pterygoid, sometimes connection between here, between metal to metal can be very firm. You can achieve some firm connection because when you are putting, you are making some movements and these movements can involve the strict connection between these two uh, uh, holders. So in this case, put the uh, spatula and make small move moving like this and you will reconnect. I have just once this situation, but I feel that sometimes it is it should be useful if in case you will have such possibility. So I think for the future in the new these handles will be done by factory. But now if you have uh, uh, if you have in your clinic uh, now this, uh, these handles, so I, I suggest you to make a small cut for this manipulation if in case it will be necessary. So this is my suggestion for you. So uh, what is uh, again additional in, in interesting feature that <clears throat> our multi-units goes just only on conical platform. If you look for all another multi-units, they are going on slope and on the step. But here we have a technical moment that machines, machining cannot give you a precisely standing the secondary part, which is connected to slope and to the step. It will touch either slope or step. Then if your superstructure will touch the step, then this will be the spice, uh, the space between abutment and superstructure. And in time of chewing forces, you will, you will receive this micro movement. Of course, for total bridges, it's not important. But for one line bridges that are more common, not total, but one line bridges, they are more often in our clinic daily practice. So it's very important not to have this micro movement. So having just only con slope, not having a step, the step is on the, on the secondary, uh, on the secondary accessory on the abutment, then we can produce the maximum precise touching the secondary abutment with a multi-unit abutment, giving just only slope, not giving a step on the multi-unit. These differences you can find comparing to another multi-units from another companies. And of course, uh, gingiva formers. For gingiva formers, I suggested for company to look possibilities if we will have uh, possibility to do the, the modification of gingiva former to have possibility to put gingiva former and to put transfer on it, having possibility to take the impression straight from the gingiva former. Why sometimes it is useful? Because when you are doing the, the one day surgery, and making impression for temporaries, then putting gingiva former, suturing soft tissues around it, then when preparing for taking the impression, you again take out the gingiva former, 
then the soft tissues they are yes, released to collapse yes around. they collapse and it's not so easy to find again to put transfer again yeah. after the impression you take out transfer again finding the the bed for your gingiva former to put back so i i asked in the in the in the company to look possibility might be technically it's not so easy technically to do this but might be we will find the solution and i think it, it would be a very great additional feature for gingiva formers to make possibility to take impressions straight from gingiva formers it's it's in in time of surgery it's it's very very sometimes important and of course uh the same gingiva formers for small multi-units and uh, today, small multi units has uh, the line of small of, of gingiva formers has also like locators. Yeah. That means two in one, gingiva former and locator. And as I know, it's going on that uh, we have the same on big gingiva formers for big multi units. Also, sometimes to use them as uh, for removable procedures. And if in the future you want to make fixed bridges, you can take out the gingiva formers and use uh, another abutments uh, that are related to, uh, to, to, to dedicated to fixed bridges. So this is also sometimes useful when, when you have a small amount of the bone putting monoblock and having possibility for removable uh, to, to uh, improve uh, fixation of, of removable procedures so now we should go through clinical situations and i think it will be might be more interesting because these technical uh, features uh, and, and 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 technical uh, questions uh, it's important to know to understand what you are doing why you are doing how you to do but uh, without clinical cases it will be very very empty and very very not not so interesting so here we have situation with uh, uh, atrophied bone in, in in molar area we of course in in classical way we have to do sinus augmentation and 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 doing uh, some kind of of another type of uh, prosthetic solution here we did it very easily without any sinus augmentation we put two implants in premolar zone and we put one pterygoid easily in time of 10 15 minutes in pterygoid area and again as i told previously we have to understand what is the angulation between our implants of course here we have classical implants here we have possibilities to add different solutions even if it will be necessary angulated multi-units but in this clinical situation looking at here we have quite parallel classical implants and we see not a very big angulation between them and pterygoid so we find we uh, looked uh, or might be we will use classical implants uh, classical sorry abutments or even conometric or multi-unit if we will use classical abutments in classical implants then in one bridge with pterygoid implant which has multi-unit abutment we have to have until 35 degrees angulation because classical abutments or conometric gives us possibility just only five degrees of angulation between implants and multi-unit gives us 30 degrees as i told previously so between this type and multi-unit will be 35 degrees if we have more than 35 we should use multi-unit and we have possibility to go until 60 degrees and when we look at our bridge we find that here are classical abutments and here is multi-unit abutment so that means that between these front implants which were quite parallel 
we have just only a couple of degrees of divergation, or might be they were very parallel, and uh, pterygoid has less than 35 degrees between front implants. So we used classical fixation, classical abutments in classical implants in the front, and multi-unit uh, by default on pterygoid implant. So here is the mouth. Look at the soft tissues again around the abutment and the bridge. Of course, in the pterygoid area, you should uh, look uh, if the patient is not very sensitive and has not warming uh, problems, uh, then one is better might be to do not zirconia, but metal ceramic and there to make small abutment on pterygoid because there the tongue is going and if the patient is very sensitive you have might be have some some uh, comments from the patient uh, i just have one one time in a lot of the cases using pterygoids but i also want to inform you that you should uh, look at if it is this patient is not very sensitive for for uh, having bigger uh, abutments here because if you will do zirconia then when you will have to have more material to be more resistible for fracturing and so the bridge in the mouth very easy procedure surgery good primary stability at once as you see here we had a uh, temporary at once might be sometimes temporary should be just only for aesthetic reasons not for chewing because of course never make a risk especially for one line uh, solutions to make uh, uh, full occlusal uh, temporaries because uh, you never know uh, uh, if the patient is is quite strong chewing forces has, then you can have uh, mobility of the implant and you can lose the implants. So if in case is necessary uh, for aesthetic reason, the temporaries do it with 20, 40 or 80 microns uh, out of occlusion, or if it is possible, one millimeter is even better. I have, so, I have two questions, okay? Yes. Let's yes. do it. It's from uh, Dr. Amza that he, regarding pterygoid, it's enough to engage only the thin head in the pterygomaxillary pillar, or it's better to engage the bigger threads too? You know, uh, it depends on clinical again situation not always pterygoid region is comfort for so, so all solutions you should examine and if you find that the wings of uh, processus pterygoideus the medial wing is is quite good quite strong has enough material and uh, the tuber is not very atrophied then of course you put the implant as maximum bone you can achieve as it is it will be better for me usually i use the length of the implant about 18 or 20 millimeters it's it's in my in my practice and of course we have in pterygoid uh, uh two-thirds of this wider widened wings uh, so sorry uh, threads and narrow threads it will be about one third of the length so this hybrid form of the pterygoid is necessary for this narrow point of the uh, implant to go to cut and to uh, inclinate the, the the plates of the the cortical plates of the bone and after it it uh, 
it 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 uh, pulls the the wider uh, wings, wider uh, windings of the uh, of the implant, and these findings also are cutting these plates and engaging in them. So I cannot say that every time they will be in the soft tuber or in the plates. It will be every time depending. It will, every time it will depend on every clinical situation. But uh, but uh, usually when when uh, the beginning is uh, of the pterygoid, we put it seems those softly, softly, and then on firmly, 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 and then you feel that you are going and cutting into the into the plates. It's not so might be easy to. Uh, retell everything via via um, uh, virtual uh, uh, speaking about this uh, ret retelling uh, this, uh, but but when we have some meetings, some some practices, we're trying to 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 show on models on 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 uh, on how directions to use for the doctors. So so. Um, it's, it's, it's more useful when when we have uh, physical uh, meetings okay. and practice. I have a question for Dr. Orsejowski. Mm -hmm. When do you recommend multi-units? In two, and two implant bridge, three implant bridge, or four or more implant reconstructions? You know, of course, as uh, uh, you should understand that Multi-unit abutment is, is. I think it depends of the angulation of the implants. Of course, of course, angulation is very important. Every and case. the length of the implant, the antagonists are very opposite. Side standing tooths are very important, and you should understand also that multi-unit is a, a a dancing superstructure because. Every, all forces are mostly overstands on screw. So uh, when you have a uh, possibility to put three implants, it's better to put three implants, of course. But if you have no possibility, then whatever. I have my doctors from another countries that successfully do bridges from premolar to pterygoid on two on two multi units, uh, I am happy about them, and they say that. Uh, meanwhile, they have no pro problems, but of course, it's necessary a time for this. And if you have possibility to put three implants, of course, it will be more resistible and more 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 powerful. Okay, let's do let's let's continue. Another clinical situation. We had a narrow bone in premolar area and we used a monoblock with the possibility a bit to bend the abutment. Here we see a small curve of the bending and putting the conometric uh, on the top of the abutment. And in molar area, we find that the vertical dimensions of the bone is 4.5 millimeter. It's not enough for us, or either we have to go or for close sinus lifting. Uh, so we found that we have thick palatal bone. So very easily we used monoblock with multi-unit because then when an angulation went to the buccal side, when we put this implant and we put easily in a couple of seconds without any bone augmentation, the implant in this direction having good primer stability because it cuts and touches a couple uh, plates, strong cortical plates, because the cortical plates are the best what can give the bone for inclination when we have softer bone. And <clears throat> after a couple months waiting, we started with prosthetic treatment. We have nice healed, healed soft tissues. Here they are in the mouth, and look what again nice and uh, and and uh, soft tissues and the abutment of the monoblock is deep in the soft tissues. We made a bridge, 
this is a uh, chronometric uh, that is uh, additionally uh, uh, additionally under the uh, zirconia zirconia cap it's it's done by it's customized by myself uh, because i i use this uh, in time of healing giving for soft tissues the best zirconia is, is small better than uh, uh, titanium so uh, we do the hybrid chronometric that is uh, uh, titanium factory made chronometrics coated with lab made uh, zirconia caps they are glued to the titanium and then I have most connection of soft tissues to the zirconia and titanium and the glue, the cement, allows me to, to put on the chronometric this hybrid zir titanium zirconia cap because if it will be just on the zirconia, it will erupt. The conus will fracture the uh, zirconia. So why it's hybrid? It's factory made titanium uh, uh, chronometer cap and on top of it we glued the lab made uh, uh, zirconia caps and we use them like a uh, gingiva formers or sometimes like an abutments for temporaries which are made from acrylic metal acrylic so the bridge as you see in the chronometric area we don't have a hole because it's ne not necessary to screw it and we have one hole for screw for multi-unit we have angulation between these in with these abutments less than 35 degrees so everything is in the mouth clean without any uh, without any cement uh, with the possibility to reconnect whenever it is necessary for us and we have quite normal quite good looking uh, bridge nothing different between classical our solutions and we solved surgery very very easily using the palatal thicker palatal side another clinical situation this is an old uh, superstyle implants we use this type of implants from 1981 my department of implantology where i was working previously start implantology in 1981 and has almost 40 years of experience and I worked in this department about 20 years so we used a lot of different types of implants we have an experience of another kind also so here we have an old superstyle which is not useful for bridges but can be used just like a single tooth after I don't know I can't remember might be 15 or 20 years of usage we left the super style implant separately and we put two implants in in the in the in the premolar area we have less than 35 divergation between implants and we use classical abutment and multi-unit abutment as well of course you can use two multi-unit abutments also it's a decision but classical abutments is a a bit smaller if you use zirconia it's a bit better sometimes for you for aesthetical uh, points of view uh, classical abutment is more uh, resistible comparing to multi-units so it helps for multi-units to overstand when we have just only two uh, two components of abutments so of course this is also like a solution as and as i told this angle matters also helps us to understand what kind of abutments we can use in our our clinical solutions and this is the bridge in final position or in the mouth Another clinical situation that is very interesting because uh, uh, the lady uh, lost the bridge here in the front area and uh, we had to move the roots. She asked us to put 
at once the temporaries because she cannot be without. And look here, we have quite big root. So that means that for good primer stability of the implant, we are not very sure. Here the bone is quite narrow. Here two big roots that will leave for us uh, empty space. Again, for primer stability is, is not so easy to achieve in this side. Here we have a small amount of the bone and here we have a quite strong and uh, and 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 uh, strong standing uh, opposite the bridge, bridge, teeth. bridge. Yes. So we looked first of all at the pterygoid area. It seems very nice, very hard, real. A lot of nice plates. But look at the second couple millimeters in front. We found that we have. A gap. It's not common. It's quite rarely, but sometimes it appears a gap between plates. That means that our pterygoid implant somewhere will be not in the bone. So again, this low lower standing opposite tooth, this bridge, is for us dangerous and we thought might be might be we can find somewhere in the molar area not only in pterygoid area and yes here we found that we have a uh, not a very comfort but a bit thicker palatal plate and it's about 10 millimeters so we also use this side then when we go, we went forward. Look what big roots are here. Here we have just only 4.5 millimeter the width of the bone. And here we have the root in front, in front, with a very, very thin plate of the bone. And thanks to our friend, to our moderator, Dr. Darcio, this yes. is his very useful uh, manipulation, his very useful technique to leave the small plate of the root in the buccal area of the bone. That helps to avoid collapse and the resorption of the thin plate of the buccal bone. Am I right, dear Darcio? Yes, I, you are completely right. The socket shield and or pet surgery can be very very useful in in these cases uh so, you know i'm i'm a, a big fan from from this technique i i started doing it in 2010 it's 11 years placing implants in with the socket shield technique and uh i i'm i really believe in this technique like i know that you believe in pterygoid implants so we are in the same mood but in different techniques so so we use this and we have this kind of solution. So we had implants here, one implant standing near the <clears throat> sinus wall, uh, angulated. Then it had possibility to overcome these empty sites of extracted roots. Having the connection with the bone deeply where the bone is fresh and of course uh, our our these implants had possibility to resist uh, to have good primer stability and to 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 hold the temporary and to resist the uh, forces uh, not straight contact forces of the lower teeth but uh, forces of the tongue, of the uh, buccal muscles, of course, sometimes of the chewing, because we had the space between the uh, uh, between the teeth about uh, 0 0.5 might be millimeter. I can't remember exactly, but but uh, the the patient had uh, good aesthetic and good uh, social social life uh, after the surgery. 
and yeah. we avoided sinus lift here because it was not necessary. If we put ju just only these three implants, we had the possibility to stop here. But when we put pterygoid and additional this implant, we can solve and all the line of the of the uh, teeth until the till the end of the mouth. Very so, nice surgery. So this is the after a couple months the final bridge. Uh, this is zirconia, but <clears throat> we are ha we have a long bridge, and uh, when the bridge is going on the curve we sometimes are afraid of the possibility of zirconia to fracture. So we started some, uh, might be more than one, than one year, we started to use gluing, doing the bridge from couple uh, uh, separate, uh, 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 separate, uh, sides and 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 gluing in with uh, in, uh, with the glue with the cement in, in in one bridge so this is like like this we have two abutment in front area classical abutments when zirconia is sensitive for uh, metal to to be as thin as it is possible and of course, uh, we want the bridge to be with the possibility to reconnect it whenever it will be necessary in the future. We have the connection between these two parts of the bridges and we have three multi-units here and one of multi-units, sorry, as you see here is angulated. Here by default, we have two straight multi-units. Here we have one angulated and where here we have two straight abutment, classical abutment. So between these abutments, multi-unit and classical, we had possibility angulation until 35 degrees and uh, between multi-units, 60 degrees. But here will be uh, less than, than it's, it's, it's necessary. So multi-units, these multi-units almost parallel uh, multi-units of monoblocks almost parallel to a front standing tooth and this classical implants in the middle has possibility to use angulated multi-unit and also we solve easily the angulation between these these uh, accessories uh, between these abutments so we gave for the front thinner classical abutments not multi-units that are a bit thicker and solved the color uh, questions and when we glued these two parts in 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 in, in the mouth, we had like a single bridge. So are, we have, sorry, sorry, you are gluing these uh, two pieces in the mouth. Yes, uh, because we we here, ask me yes. if we are uh, gluing in the mouth or in lab, and I I thought it was in the lab. Um, but okay, but no, now I know that it's in mouth. But uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. I I'm looking about this, and I think it was much more easier if you use multi units in all the implants. You can have only one one bridge and screw it uh, screw it in uh, in five multi units. I I think it's uh, uh, that's your here is not a not a question it could be one bridge okay okay the the connection between them is not related to multi-unit and classical abutments it oh. is because the bridge is very long and mm -hmm. we are afraid not to fracture it so why we glue it because the glue will be like a micro amortizator between the zirconia mm. We can do the, the one piece bridge, no problem, because this is this is possible. Like this became like one piece bridge. It's not necessary in front for me to use multi units. The front I used this kind of abutments because these uh, are more narrow. T base they are more narrow. Yes, no. It, it, of, it, every piece of millimeter is very important for the for the aesthetic reason. 
So yeah, why yeah. we we played okay. in, in kind of this? If even in the front will be multi units, uh, I will glue it uh, also. Anyway, be anyway, because because we found and we think that this connection will resist these possibilities of fracture of long, especially full mouth bridges, because we find find in our practice we look observe in the internet on the, that. Uh, zirconia is very nice material, but uh, also has its its some some uh, mm, um, uh, some uh, additional uh, problems and 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 fracture is one of them. Okay. So this is the final bridge. As you see, the gums. Thanks for you with the bone shield technique. We have a very natural, nice gums, and we have a bridge uh, uh, done on, on this type of, of, of implants. Another clinical situation, uh, you see in the lower jaw, uh, we have a combination between monoblocks, where the bone was thin, and classical implants, where the bone was thicker. But uh, I will show you upper. And we started to plan it and look in the upper jaw what we have, the thickness of the bone, 3.8 millimeter, couple millimeters upper from the top of the bone. Here, 4.8 millimeters, very deep from the top of the bone and a and couple millimeters, three millimeters of the thickness. It's a very thin bone. Look what we've done. Where we had a thin bone, we put monoblocks with multi-units. In the front, we had thicker bone, we put classical implants. This is the guiding equipment. And as you see, it's just only for pilot drills, just only. It's our additional know-how that we can make an individual curve on the guidance. We have an engineer who, for dentulous patients, we can calculate the positions of the temporomandibular joint and canalis incisivus and create uh, individual curve of the uh, teeth. And uh, so here we can observe this curve on the, on the guide, uh, what is fabricated for surgery. So we put the implants and as you see in front we used this small multi-units yes, again for aesthetic reasons and we have a, a temporary bridge which uh, which is metal this is a very important to have not acrylic but metal acrylic with metal might be a PMME A it should be a, for, in, for reinforced with metal. Metal is very important here because if the temporary will fracture, you will have a problems. You will yeah. lose the implants. So don't make a risk and make this temporary with a metal. And in a couple of days, we made this uh, bridge and put it into the mouth, not doing any additional augmentation for this clinical case uh, for this patient. Again, lower jaw in the mandible we have a big severe trophic and bypassing the nerve buccally or sometimes lingually is the most easier using monoblocks the most easier i put a lot of classical implants near the nerve and today i can say that monoblocks are easier to manage putting uh near the avoid uh uh, uh, going uh, bypassing uh, nervous alveolaris inferior. This is the computer tomography. You see, this is the buccal. It's more comfort to go buccally here. And here, the nerve. And on the left side, it's more comfort to go lingually. So, that is the bridge. Look. 
one implant is 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 in in vocal position another in lingual our implants are standing in different positions but between these multi units might be even until 60 degrees of angulation we don't have this angulation between them we can control it in time of surgery using the angle meter and so we made a, a bridge it's also like temporary metal acrylic but a lot of our patients use these bridges a couple of years because we made these bridges as much precise as we can. We use nice uh, factory made teeth. We reinforced it with metal and uh, our patient happily use these bridges a couple of years until they are prepared for uh, permanent, permanent uh, solutions, uh, permanent bridges. So as you see, our implants are playing in the mouth in different directions and and uh, anyway we can solve it with uh connected with one one uh, totally uh bridge another clinical situation where we combined between conometrics and uh, multi-units because what is a very very interesting interesting uh, situation this i want to show chronometrics is also on classical implants uh, on classical abutments one uh, we have ak type of uh, abutment for chronometrics and uh, for monoblocks uh, also chronometrics uh, the same time uh, for new uh, type of of uh, uh, compressive k or the old type for compressive C, as you see here, uh, which has no shaft inside. And uh, <clears throat> here we see the guide guiding, but the most important guiding is removable prosthesis. And if the patient before surgery has removable, this is the best and very important uh, guide guide guiding for you because it will show you where your implants are, where your abutments are in time of insertion. And here we put four implants using conometrics and two implants with multi-unit solutions. The impression in time of surgery. And here what we have. We put here classical implants because we had thicker bone and we had possibility to put angulated multi-units if it was necessary. And uh, chronometrics, four chronometrics between them, they had just only until 10 degrees of angulation and multi-units had possibility angulation between them and chronometric 35 degrees between multi-units could be possibility of angulation until even 60 degrees but when we put angulated multi-unit we solve it very easily and then this is the uh, view in the mouth zirconia hybrid titanium zirconia chronometrics and two multi-units and this is the bridge and this is in the bridge Again, temporary bridge, titanium zirconia chronometrics, and here we have two multi units. What is the phenomenon of using chronometrics, especially in the front area? When we use monoblocks in front area, we can bend them. And when we put monoblock and we bend our abutment to desired vestibular position, we have the possibility to give to our patient a wide, thin prosthetic in the front. When you put just only classical implant or monoblock with straight multi-unit, you will be depending on the position of the bone and then your prosthesis will start from the position where the bone will put your implant. But when you will have possibility to bend it 
the abutment to your desired position and to put chronometrics, then you will win one, two, three, sometimes millimeters of the thickness of the prosthesis. Believe me, it is very important for the patients because they feel this region quite sensitive. And uh, if we previously had with multi-units thicker prosthesis, so nowadays using conometrics in the front area and having possibilities to bend implants, implants with multi-units are not for bending. Implants with straight abutments, monoblocks, they are for for bending and then one using for conometrics is possible. So we have uh, quite often quite thin front area, uh, no matter if it is uh, atrophied, uh, atrophied bones. This is a bad solution. I wanted also to show you because technician uh, 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 took uh, wrong abutments he had to took full titanium abutments and to stop with this composite material on the level of the soft tissues and here he took a, a, a wrong uh, uh, kind of abutments multi-unit and put the composite into the soft tissues and soft tissues mostly are friendly for zirconia, for titanium, but are not very friendly for acrylic, not very friendly for composite as well. So here, if the technique uh, had to choose titanium, all titanium abutment and leaving in the soft tissues titanium, it has to be better. I put it just only to to you to show uh, the uh, wrong uh, wrong choice of the dental technician. Again, uh, when you are preparing uh, for digital, it's very important your removable prosthesis, which will be scanned, because this will be your guidance for your uh, guiding. Uh, 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 guiding uh, in, in, in the in time of uh, surgery. And uh, I remember you uh, again that uh, we had uh, our, our components in, in blue sky plan, in implant station. For me, implant station is very, very nice software, uh, quite useful and very comfort. So there you can find uh, uh, Blue Sky Bio, it will be in, in, in uh, uh, close time. But implantation, as I know, it is already. And as I know, it's about, about 10 companies that uh, have in, in their software, we can find uh, our products. And here again, preparing for guiding, as you see, again, individual curve of the uh, teeth and guided just only with the uh, rules for drills, for uh, pilot drills. The best guide is our removable, which is very, very important. And again, we mix, mixed between multi-units, here, pterygoids, between classical abutments with angulated multi-units, and as you see in front, conometrics. Front will be more thin, if I will use this solution, if I will have possibility a bit to bend implants in the front and having possibility here to put classical implant and angulated multi-unit, I can solve the necessity of, uh, of, of uh, angulation between implants, uh, conometrics and multi-units and multi-units and multi-units between them as well. Look at the thickness of the bone, 4.1 millimeter. The position of the abutment. Now we position it, it more uh, comfort for us. This is a frame for our temporaries. That's how does it look technically when we do temporaries? This is metal is very, very, as I told, important. And so we have four multi-units and two chronometrics in front of the of the bridge. 
And here we see the temporary again. And mixed four multi units and sorry, and two econometrics in front, giving the possibility to have as slim front area as it is possible. Look at this. So here is the solution, another solution with multi units. Compare thickness when we have multi units, and this is the permanent of another clinical situation, zirconia, and the thickness here. As I say, when we use in front, uh, implants which can be a bit bended, it's easier to manage with a thickness. Of course, if you have a lot of bone, no problem. You can put your implant in your desired position. But when you have thin bone and the bone provides your position of the implant, then sometimes abutments are standing in very uncomfortable uh, position. So sometimes here, bending is, is very, very useful. And uh, again, uh, the temporaries which uh, patient had in the mouth about uh, three or more years, this is the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the chronometrics uh, with multi-units in one piece. And again, permanent bridge, which we divided in three parts gluing on the curve zirconia in, in 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 one bridge now you see the one bridge previously it was three parts and then we glue of course this might be done in lab of course i like to glue everything in the mouth because i understand that in the mouth i have the most final position comparing what we have on the stone so my my uh uh, politics so what i do i like to glue by myself in the mouth so they i i can have as much as a passive position uh, uh, positioning of the bridge what is so, the glue that you use to glue with zirconia this is the uh, uh, resin cements what are uh, dedicated to so zirconia for example we use a lot of g sealing case or uh, or or evoclar multilink or okay. another, it's uh, just uh, resin cements for, for, for zirconia. So here we have the connections who, for this big bridge are like a micro amortizators protecting the possibilities to break the bridge. Because if it will be one piece of zirconia, I, every time I'm afraid that it can fracture because of our plasticity of our body and of the rigidity of the of the zirconia so again the view in the mouth as you see one part glued and then one all 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 the bridge in the mouth and the last last our clinical case very interesting it's done by our very nice and very clever dental technician Mikhail Sletkov and uh, he suggested again more than three years temporaries and then uh, patient uh, prepared for permanent so he suggested not to glue but to do a uh, uh, gold uh, gold uh, uh, layers uh, galvano so in connections between these bridges, I'm sorry sometimes for pictures because uh, sometimes I'm boring and I'm quickly doing my pictures with the phone. But of course, the quality of the phone is not so good as a professional uh, uh, camera. So uh, the connections are made with uh, with uh, gold uh, galvano and three pieces of the bridge zirconia and we are putting everything in the mouth as you see previously on the x-ray we have angulated implant angulated with angulated multi-unit angulated multi-unit and in front everywhere we have monoblocks with chronometrics so between these monoblocks 
they are uh, more or less parallel, they can go until 10 degrees of divergation because, because conometric has uh, five degrees angulation and has uh, between uh, two, two different uh, implants until 10 degrees angulation. And multi-units, angulated multi-units, has the possibility to, to solve uh, angulation between conometrics and multi-units until 35 degrees. And if we overcome 35, then we can add uh, 15 or 30 or even 45 with angulated multi-units if we use uh, classical implants. So finally, we collected everything in the mouth. The teeth are quite long because uh, the patient has a thick lip and mustache. And uh, the final work, quite firmly standing like one piece bridge in the mouth. And whatever it will be necessary, we can uh, take this bridge out of the mouth. It, it will be necessary somewhere to repair something or to some do treatment or whatever it will be. Our bridges are, all bridges are in, let me say, a uh, uh, service, service uh, position, service uh, 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 mode, uh, because, because you never know when will be uh, necessary to take the bridge out. So this is the final, and look at the mouth. Again, we have quite thin, thin front, which is very, again, important for the patient, uh, for the feel uh, more natural comparing if we have thicker. Always for these uh, uh, solutions, we have just, we see just only front. Nice teeth, good looking, but we never stop what is inside. And inside is uh, another life. And usually we have thicker because multi-units are not possibility to bend front uh, area, especially when we have atrophic uh, jaws, we have uh, problems with the thickness. Of course, uh, <coughs> Dr. Darcio told me today that he they have additional some solution with very interesting abutments and i think that in the future we will we will have possibility to use your creation and what you suggest for even more divergations between implants you told us that it is about the possibility about 90 degrees of divergations it's 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 real very very helpful in in a very atrophic uh, situations Yes, this is could be a, a very nice help in cases with the with the variations of the implants are are bigger than than uh, the thirty or forty five degrees. Yes, because uh, uh, atrophic uh, atrophic bones sometimes uh, uh, asks us to put implants in different angulations, but knowing this and understanding this. Uh, gives you possibilities not to do everything parallel, not to do augmentations, not to involve patients in difficult surgeries and uh, and and uh, doing couple uh, couple couple times for for achieving this this possibility to solve uh, this uh, this uh, edentulous uh, you know, with atrophic bones. So in the end of everything. I would like to ask uh, to thanks uh, to say thank for everybody. Big thanks for you, dear Darcio, thank and you. I would yeah. like everybody to invite and to 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 our big event that will be held in in October. I think that I I hope that it will be held because of this. Uh, virus of this uh, quarantine but uh, might be it will be easier in the in the autumn and on 28th 30th of october will be 40th anniversary of implantology in lithuania as i told in 1981 we started implantology and in this event it will be a very big event we will have about 40 uh, speakers uh, included us dr darcio me and the speakers will be uh, starting from the East countries, 
like uh, like uh, like uh, previous when we were in USSR and also a lot of uh, speakers from Europe and also some Arabic countries uh, uh, as well so to to feel that different culture to understand the different possibilities to be near the speakers to hear their their solutions is very very important if you are real implantologist and if you are very involved in this kind of treatment so i'm inviting everybody to our event in uh, autumn thank, thank you very you. much guys for thank this you thing. thank you Daniel. uh thank you for your uh, lecture thank you for the invitation for open dental community and i hope you see you soon uh, more soon than in the event in uh, Lithuania and uh, I hope everybody was enjoying the, the lecture and thank you very much uh, any question anybody wants to make some any question uh, for uh, Dr. Danius before we 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 end the the live streaming so I think that we uh, we saw some questions in time of uh, of our our discussion. Of course, might be not so easy everything to trans retranslate and everything to 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 say all information what is necessary to to give because uh, live meetings. Uh, master classes having everything in hands uh every step by step looking is more useful but anyway this also theoretical theoretical part is important to add something little by little little by little to your I daily, daily to at least when you are going to do an, any master class in the in the meeting uh yeah. or you know we are doing master classes also here in Konos, but uh, now it stopped because of, of Corona. Yes, yeah. of COVID. But of course, we are meeting in different uh, congresses. We are meeting in in, in uh, some uh, some uh, 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 some meetings of uh, where we have. Uh, That's it. Expositions. Expositions, yes, yes. So, so there we are. We are sharing our knowledge. We are sitting, discussing. Of yes. course, might be somewhere I am not very uh, uh, right, and might be some can correct me, say yes, it is. But it is also might be like this, like this. Everybody has uh, some uh, uh, ways. I I would like to invite everybody to the master class that I'm going to give in the Lithuania Congress. We are. I'm going to do a, a master class with the, the PET technique, with the partial extraction therapy technique. So it's going to be the 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 main issue of my of my presentation, and I'm going to talk about it. And that's why I ask you if you make a master class in the same congress about this um, this issue or not, because maybe people gonna join us and they they want to learn more in the master class. So uh, I have here uh, a question uh, uh, from one uh, center, Nene Dental Center, that um, they ask that they can have the replay of this webinar. Uh, this this yeah. webinar is recorded, or it's yes, yes, you you will find on Facebook. Yes, you will find on Facebook of Open Dental Community uh, a long time. This okay. record will be yes. This okay, my dear yeah. friends, it was a pleasure to be with you and it was a pleasure to learn with you about this uh, new new implant, this not new implant system, but with this new implant system for me because I I don't I'm I'm most most more useful with the two-piece implant. So for me it was very, very uh, nice to hear you and uh I think it's uh, time to rest a little bit in the rest of the night. Yes, yeah, sure. So again, thank you very much. And of course, uh, as you told, 
for me, my goal is uh, to show the possibilities, additional possibilities of monoblocks. I'm not crazy of monoblocks. I do a lot of classical implants. I monoblocks have just only, as I told, about 30 percentage of, uh, but it's a very additional powerful uh, possibility. And if you if you manage with it, if you understand it, it is very useful, very useful. So again, thank you very much, guys. Thank for your patience. Bye. Sorry for my English. If it was a little bit, sometimes I'm not very it's fluent very nice. English. But... Nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, Darcy. Thank bye. you for your help. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.